You have a lot of stuff. I mean a lot of stuff. Applications, files, videos, music, podcasts, ebooks, and you are constantly faced with the problem of finding space for all your stuff. Well, no longer. What once existed in the realm of science fiction has become reality. With cloud computing, all your stuff can be stored on the infinite space of the World Wide Web instead of on the limited space of computer hard drives. As described in Jonathan Strickland's article, How Cloud Computing Works, the versatility and power of cloud computing is having a profound impact in the corporate setting and for personal computing. Over the next few minutes I will explain what is cloud computing, how cloud computing works, and what are the pros and cons. Let's begin with an explanation on where your stuff is stored. Cloud computing is the storing of data and applications on remote servers and accessing them via the internet rather than saving or installing them on your personal or office computer. The term cloud is used because data and applications are stored on a cloud or collection of web servers and computers owned by a third party somewhere else. The cloud can be accessed via the cloud computing systems interface software. That can be as simple as using a web-based service which hosts all the applications and files that you would need for your job or personal life. The cloud is being used not only to store data but also as an inexpensive, efficient and flexible alternative to purchasing, running and maintaining in-house computing, equipment, and software. Not only that, the cloud gives you the ability to work anywhere at any time because your information is always at your fingertips. One example of cloud computing is an online email account. You log into a web email account remotely through a browser, but the storage for your account doesn't exist on your computer. It belongs in the email provider's cloud. Now that you have an understanding of what the cloud computing system is, I will explain how your stuff is stored. The cloud computing architecture is comprised of two parts, the front end and the back end, which are connected by the internet. The front end represents the computer that you, as a client, sees. This side requires you to access the cloud computing system. Gaining access can be simple as using an internet browser or more complex by using a unique interface software which lets you access the cloud. The back end of a cloud computing system is comprised of the computers, servers, and data storage systems which store all your files and information. This is the part that does all the work. There is a central server that administers the system, monitoring traffic and client demands to ensure everything runs smoothly. In addition, this central server follows a set of rules, known as protocols. The central server also uses software called middleware that allows the network computers to communicate with each other. Naturally, cloud computing companies build in redundancy where they save multiple backup copies of your work in case of problems. However, the more clients they have, the more storage space they need. So cloud computing companies require at least twice the number of storage devices to store all their clients' information. But why choose cloud computing as a viable option for data storage? because cloud computing applications are limitless. First, 
Using cloud computing allows you to access your applications and data from anywhere. So long as you can link with the cloud through the internet, none of your data would be confined to a single hard drive or location. Second, with the movement of your files to the web, you no longer have to pay for expensive high memory computers. You simply need a device that is powerful enough to run the middleware needed to connect to the cloud system. Third, in a company-wide setting, when you use the cloud, your employer will not need to buy software or software licenses for every employee. Instead, they will pay a fee to a cloud computing company to let all their employees access a suite of software online. Fourth, servers and digital storage takes up physical space, which you may have to rent. Cloud computing companies store your data on their hardware, so no physical space is needed at the front end. Fifth, streamlining the software and hardware will reduce IT problems and costs. Finally, the cloud computing system's back end is a network of computers. You may be able to take advantage of the network's combined processing power to speed up operations. However, even with all these benefits, there are still potential problems. The two biggest concerns are security and privacy. You are handing your important data over to another company to watch. Not only that, if you have the ability to log into your files and applications from anywhere, it's possible your privacy could be compromised once the data leaves your hands. Websites and cloud computing services can get hacked. But there's still hope. Cloud computing companies live and die by their reputations and reliability. Therefore, they do everything possible to secure your files. But you also need to protect yourself. Have authentication techniques like usernames and difficult passwords. Don't reuse or share your passwords on different websites and backup files either on a different cloud service or a hard drive just in case something happens. There are also authorization practices where you list the people who are authorized to access certain information stored on the cloud system. For example, an employee might only be able to use certain applications stored on the cloud which are pertinent to their work. One additional concern is the effect cloud computing will have on the IT industry. Cloud computing can streamline computer systems, reducing maintenance and repair. Therefore, all the work of IT will move to the back end of the system. Finally, as mentioned in Bernadette Johnston's article, five factors that affect cloud-based data upload and retrieval you should also consider usage fees and bandwidth caps. The infrastructure of cloud computing is very expensive, so companies begin to charge you monthly or annual fees when you want to store more than a few gigabytes of data. You could easily hit your limit right in the middle of transferring the hundred or so pictures you took of your children, pets, and meals that week. Of course, the error message saying you have run out of space is likely to be accompanied by instructions on how you can purchase more. In addition, internet service providers may implement bandwidth caps, which limit the amount of data you are allowed to transfer over their network each month. When you go over the limit, providers will begin to charge you fees, slow down your connection, or cut off your service. This could most certainly put a damper on your cloud upload and retrieval capabilities. In summary, cloud computing is about storing your stuff on remote servers instead of on your computers or other devices. This information can be accessed using the internet with any device anywhere in the world so long as that device can support the cloud computing system. The cloud computing system is made up of a front end, which is the client side, and a back end, which is the collection of servers and computers owned by a third party who stores your data. 
A central server which is part of the back end follows protocols and uses middleware to communicate between networked computers. Finally, although cloud computing reduces IT costs, increases processing power, and allows you to access your files anywhere using a moderately priced device, security, privacy, usage fees, and bandwidth caps are still issues that need to be addressed. We are on the brink of a revolution. Cloud computing is everywhere. With tools like Google Drive replacing Microsoft Office, banking websites replacing branch offices, and Dropbox storing all our data and files, cloud computing is now ready to store your stuff. Created using Powtoon.